my dear friends welcome to the essentials of inorganic chemistry i am your friend dr vidhi bhart and i am starting a new series of lectures on the title safety and hygiene in chemical industry this is going to be the first talk in the series and in today's talk i will give a brief introduction of safety and health and then i will explain you the need of safety in chemical industry we'll talk about the hygiene later on friends this course is an important course for any learner of chemistry who has a possibility to work in a chemical industry or even in a research lab or in any profession that is going to involve practicals of chemistry the coverage of this course is approximately of the level of an upper undergraduate science so i formally begin this course introduction friends safety and health of employees is very important in industry there are two very important reasons behind that number one is healthy and safe and happy employees gives better production and the second and more important rule is that the laws the prevailing laws and the rules they require that the employees of an industry should remain safe should remain healthy and should remain happy there is an act abbreviated as osh act which is occupational safety and health act and this act provides the guidelines for the safety and health of the employees in industry this act not only deals with the safety and health it also deals with the welfare the happiness the good being of the people at work so industries nowadays go ahead and try to take care of even the family members of their employees as a good practice so that is a very brief introduction about the safety and health now i will come to the main point which is about the need of safety particularly in chemical industry friends safety in dealing with chemicals is more complicated than the safety related to civil mechanical or electrical things say for example if i talk about civil if you are standing on a civil construction then over a long experience we know that if we do not take care if we do not take safety precautions if we go near the parapet then there is a chance of accident of falling down even a child knows about some basic safety measures 
to be taken while dealing with civil entities like maybe building or other things or like something can fall on a person standing this can be like civil accidents then about the mechanical safety in industries or even otherwise we have to deal with many mechanical machines and even a roughly educated person or a general aware person understands the elementary safety precautions required while dealing with a machine when it comes to electrical safety most of us do understand that when you don't have to touch an open wire all of us know that touching an open wire open wire which is carrying some current can give us a shock so we have a huge deal of experience with civil mechanical and electrical safety and therefore the safety precautions are taken by people at least elementary safety precautions are taken by people while dealing with civil mechanical and electrical entities but when it comes to the chemicals the story is very different as we move ahead in the discussion i will explain you that there are chemicals whose hazards toxicity and even the reactivity are not yet well documented people do not really know how to deal with them when can they explode under what circumstances they can catch fire etc so in short when i list the needs of safety in chemical industry the first and the foremost point comes that the safety in dealing with chemicals is complicated compared to the safety in dealing with civil mechanical or electrical safety and that is why persons dealing with chemicals that is employees of chemical industries need a greater understanding of safety so that was my first point next wide variety of chemicals are used in the industry and these chemicals have varied that is different properties and hazards so there is you need to know a lot of things about chemistry for being safe and handle the chemicals it's not like civil mechanical or electrical entities where you have only a few metals or a few different types of construction works or few different types of electricity to handle but here every chemical you know there are millions of chemicals and every chemical is having its own individual property it can be hazardous in a very unanticipated way so once again the need of safety in chemical industry is established by this point now what happens in the third point you know we have a wide variety of chemicals but then you know same chemical is sometimes used for different purposes for making different things different chemicals 
so different processes or different reactions are carried out using the same chemical because of this different processes you may end up with different conditions and then you know you have to have different types of controls on this chemicals so there is a huge variety in the dealing with chemicals so my third point is actually supporting the first point that you have variety of chemicals and then you say that you have to perform variety of processes and you have to control them in a variety of ways next now then you know the state of chemical that is solid liquid gas the same chemical sometimes is used in a solid state at a very low temperature then it can have uh, it has to be handled in a different way the same chemical when used in a gaseous state has to be handled in a different way at a low pressure it has to be handled differently maybe at a high temperature you have to handle it more carefully then you have different process parameters and these are all variable and hence even though you are using the same chemical but your safety considerations are going to be different then i come to the fifth point this is a very important point hazard data and complete reactivity data of all the chemicals is not documented you do not actually have full documentation of all the chemicals under different states under different reaction conditions and for different reactions and that is why the hazards of many chemical are known only after the accident takes place so this point is a very important point which emphasizes the need of safety in chemical industries then many times the chemicals are controlled using engineering tools but you know you have a wide variety of chemical industries it begins from a home uh, household kind of industry to small scale industry to medium scale industry to large scale industry so you know all the industries cannot afford to have this kind of sophisticated engineering controls so some alternative controls have also to be thought about when you are dealing with a small scale industry as compared to that of a large scale industry then again control devices may it be engineering control may it be an electronic control or some other control devices and personal protection are inadequate or insufficient see what happens you know nowadays uh, we hear a lot about masks and then even advanced ppe kits ppe kits they are used for protection against corona this is not a new device this is a safety device which has been used over years in the chemical industries this is this is in a way called a personal protection device but what happens that there may be many employees in an industry on a plant but sometimes you will find that the protection kits are not in sufficient quantity or are not of sufficient the good quality and therefore are not provided to everyone so this factor also needs to be taken care of then warning devices are used in industries but you know 
warning devices become important when an accident is about to occur and you know accidents do not occur every day so in many cases it is being observed that the warning devices are not properly taken care of they are not well maintained and sometimes they are not even available so that is an important reason why we need to take care of the safety of the employees in chemical industries now i come to the ninth point i have already mentioned lot of things in the first eight points and again you know chemical industry ranges from say a heavy chemical manufacturing industry to a fertilizer manufacturing industry to a pesticides and insecticides manufacturing industry to a pharmaceutical industry to a textile industry and many other industries each of these industries have different working conditions the plant designs and the operations are also different and therefore the number of possible dangers involving the handling of the chemicals are also many and that is why there is a great need of proper knowledge and attention not only that just having knowledge and attention will not always make you safe but you should begin with acquiring the knowledge and then you have to attend it properly and then you have to have proper safety measures and you also need to have proper preventive as well as corrective maintenance you know preventive maintenance are the maintenance is which try to prevent or to stop the accidents etc whereas the corrective maintenance are generally done when say a small accident has taken place but in order to stop the accident of even larger scale to take place the corrective maintenance has to be done so these are the nine important points now i come to the last two important points which indicate the need of safety in chemical industries now there are a large number of small and medium chemical factories and this number is continuously growing in our country it continuously increases particularly when we talk about gujarat our state it is having one of the highest number of chemical industries in the entire nation so you know friends more the industries more the employees more the chances of accident and more is the need of safety in the last point i would just recall an accident that took place in an industry called union carbide this accident took place before the birth of most of the college students today it took place in 1984 and it caused more than 2500 deaths and many more people were injured and because of this everybody's attention was drawn towards the safety related to the chemicals so as such i am going to 
end this first introductory lecture over here but before i finish i would show you the structures of some chemicals the first one is your methyl isocyanate mic you have methyl and then this nco group is your cyanate c y a n a t e cyanate group and if the n is connecting to the alkyl or aryl then it is called isocyanate whereas the same nco group if o is connecting to the r which may be alkyl aryl etc then it is called cyanide so the first structure is methyl isocyanate then you have methyl cyanate the other few the picture on the left your cn group and the alkyl group is connected to c it is called methyl cyanide and then you have the methyl group connected to the n of the cn group cn is called cyanide but if it is n connected then it is called methyl isocyanide now why did i show you all these four pictures you know i mentioned about the bhopal accident one of this chemical was responsible for death of so many people in bhopal incident and that chemical was methyl isocyanate mic this one see methyl isocyanate and methyl cyanate are you know isomers but this is a very important industrial chemical and it is it is very toxic very highly poisonous 1 ppm one part per million in air can cause a death whereas this one is not very very frequently used in the industry and uh, that is why the toxicity of this compound methyl cyanate is not much discussed then you know if you ask any common man that which is the worst poison in the world then that person will perhaps reply cyanide but being a chemist we all know that cyanide is a functional group there can be thousands of cyanides and here we have one cyanide methyl cyanide this we have been using so many times in our laboratory as a solvent this is known as aceto nitrile whereas this methyl isocyanide is an isomer of methyl cyanide and connected but as compared to acetonitrile this is less frequently used so with this brief introduction and some discussion on need of safety in chemical industry i end my first lecture over here and i have some plans of conducting at least seven lectures in this series which may be useful to any upper and undergraduate student who is aspiring to work in the chemical sector so thank you and goodbye